Now we go to the graph view that I just showed you. So the graph view is the thing I already showed you just a few seconds ago. It's the screen that I spend 80% of my time in when I work with Grub. Um, and so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to open another database and then I show you some easy ways to get triples on the screen. <clears throat> because a lot of time when we have people that use Grub for the first time, <clears throat> they say, hey, I look at this blank screen, but how do I get the triples there? So I'll just give you a few ways to do that. Yeah. Um, so let me go back to the database. Uh, here it is. And I'm going to open a, a healthcare demo. <coughs> so this is actually a database that contains about 100,000 clinical trials, uh, 1,800 FDA approved drugs, 4,000 diseases, 4,000 side effects. Um, and they're all linked together because clinical trials talk about drugs and side effects and diseases. Then we also have healthcare records in there, unstructured notes uh, that were indexed with a MeSH ontology. MeSH is a uh, an ontology from the medical domain, and we also have everything indexed with SNOMED. Yeah? So this way we can actually take electronic health records and link them all the way down to clinical trials. So let me give you a quick demo. So how do I get, so I have all these 13 million triples here. How do I get something on the screen? First thing I showed you is the, already that display all triples up to a limit. And by the way, I apologize when you do webinars, I can't use my uh, 2,000 by 1,000 uh, resolution on the screen. So it kind of always looks a little bit crowded. But anyway, here you see some triples that we have on the screen. Yeah, one way to do this, and I can actually zoom in, yeah, this way. So I can zoom in the triples and I can reformat the, the triples again to see if I get a better picture. So I'm using the letter R to reorder the graph. So this is one way to get something on the trip uh, on, on the on the display. Just use display show all triples. The next way was to use a free text index. So let me get rid of the triples. I use remove um, all notes on the screen. So the next thing I'm going to do is to uh, display triples by free text index, or notes by free text index. Yeah? So I'm using the semicolon usually. I never you do this by using the menu, but I do this and say I'm interested in, say, ibuprofen. And uh, cancer, there's actually only one clinical trial that discusses both. So let me do another query. Let's just search for ibuprofen. And I get long list of things that have ibuprofen in them. Yeah, I select a few of the nodes. And then here, oh, I have to go a bit bigger again. And so here I have uh, some clinical trials on the screen. So say I want to explore this on the screen, then one thing I can do is can right click on the node and say display link notes from a tree. Yeah, and here you see that this thing has a brief title, criteria, discusses certain drugs. So I could actually click on the drugs that I discussed. Yeah. And so now I see the drugs and I could do this for here. And let's say let's look at the um, well, let's look at the mesh. Well, let's look at something that has more things here. Side effects, side effects of this guy here. Oh, I have to click on it. On the side effects. Okay, yeah. So here's some side effects. Anyway, I can do this uh, by right clicking, but that's of course a very painful way to do this. So let me go take a step back and. Uh, a very important command, maybe the most important command in Grub is the letter Z, or the key Z, that will take you back a step. Yeah, so now we're back by using C. So the next thing I'm going to do is to press the letter P. Maybe let me first do it here. Display, um, where is it correct? Oh, yeah, display, um, okay. What I'm going to do, I just hit the letter P, and what I see is all the predicates for clinical trials. And 
I'm only interested in exploring these for the moment. I'll, I'll select more later. So I selected four predicates. I say OK. And now I hit the letter F. OK, yeah, yeah. Actually, so let me try to show me. It's on global options. And then you can say uh, select current predicates. So this is where the letter P comes from. Okay. Anyway, so we're here. Now I can let the letter F. And what you see now is I um, linked I, I, uh, all the diseases, drugs, and side effects are suddenly shown in the picture. And if there were already things on the screen, it would connect to it too. So if I click on this guy here, then you get all the things from here. And if you click on this, you get them from them. And if you click here, so here you see already how this is pretty much connected. Yeah, let's, let's make it a little bit smaller. We focus. So every time when the screen changes, I actually push the letter R. So, so this is one way to get more things on the screen. And I showed you the letter Z to go back. I showed you the letter R to reorder, so I can reorder the graph. So we use a spring layout algorithm. If I hit the letter D, I nudge the graph. So sometimes the graph is not entirely finished when you look at it. R means vigorously try to do it again. D means actually here is I think the layout. Here's the, the answer. So redo redo layout from scratch is letter R. Update layout incrementally is uh, D. And update layout really strongly is five. Okay, that's probably good. All right. So um, now one thing I also showed you is to make things bigger and smaller. So I can zoom in with my mouse and just use the wheel on your mouse to go deeper, go all the way down deep. Um, for people that do it without a mouse, you can actually use um, comma and dot. Um, let's see, where's the shift? Sorry, shift. Yeah. So shift comma will 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 zoom out. No, zoom in. And anyway, just play with it. I, I always get confused with the direction. Yeah. So this is the um, and you'll find it in your script later how to do this. Um, then another thing is uh, sometimes you have a a lot of things on your screen. And you see that things get kind of um, stuck. Show all, uh, that's maybe a little bit too good. Yeah, so you see your, your screen gets really big. So one thing you also can do is actually make the canvas bigger or smaller. So if you do smaller than and bigger than, so I think here it is make canvas larger is actually the dot and canvas smaller is the comma. So when you do this, look, watch the bottom of my screen. Yeah, so I make actually the canvas bigger. So now when I do this again, the um, it will use a bigger screen to go to various places. Yeah, so it's, it's one way. Uh, by the way, you can always see on the left bottom side it's kind of a little, I don't know how you call this, but you can actually use this to navigate for the screen, too. Um, all right. So that is something you can do with the canvas. Um, I already showed you how you can delete notes from the screen. So for example, if I want to delete this guy here, I can use the letter X. So here's the whole thing. You can remove one note. Uh, you can remove all notes. Or you can actually have a graph eraser. Yeah, so just for fun, I can click on this and do the letter X. Now this guy is gone. But I can also do Control Alt X, yeah, and I can just erase part of the screen. Yeah, so it's like a, a drawing program, except I can now remove remove parts of the screen. And I, and I can reformat again and look at the screen. All right. Yeah, so this is very handy to have. Then also, you see here this empty guy here, not connected to anything. So one thing which you can do if you have too many of these things that are loose here is use remove orphans here. Remove 
uh, orphans, arrest or remove orphans, or here's to remove orphans, or shift O. Yeah. So now you see that they all the the ones that are not connected are instantly removed from the screen. Another handy link to know. Then sometimes when you're looking at the screen, then you know on the left hand side you have all the names of the predicates. So if I click on diseases, you see those, you see the drugs, you see the side effects, you see the targets that are linked. Here you see the classes of the nodes here. Um, by the way, so you can also uh, oh, so here this this is one way to look at the, the names of the predicates. But actually if I hit the letter N, I also will see actually what the name of various uh, uh, predicates are. But usually I think it's really bad for the aesthetics on the screen, so you can just play with it. Yeah, you can just turn it on and off. Um, another thing uh, that you might notice here, if I put my mouse on, say, hemorrhage, then what you see at the bottom, left bottom, is the full URL. So one thing that we do is, well, you notice two things, by the way. One thing you notice, let me move here, is that the full URL doesn't even have the name hemorrhage in it. And that is because when we display nodes on the screen, we usually use the name, uh, the, the label of, of a particular node. So we don't do the real name, but just the, the label. So just let me show you what it would look like if I would use the label, uh, not, not use the labels. Yeah, if I, let's see, console, console F8. Yeah, so now with console eight, yeah, don't worry, it's in the script, you'll see that later. You're not using the, uh, the labels anymore. So suddenly it becomes kind of a really boring graph because you only see codes. When I do console eight again, you'll see that I show things by label. Yeah, so that's important. Okay. Um, so this is some things that you can do. Now, what you see here is we used the label yeah, to display. But sometimes, say you download free DBP, DB, no, you download Freebase, then uh, notes won't have a label, but they will have a name. So in that case, it's always very handy to look at the node label predicates and make custom predicates for node labels. So here, for example, you can see that if we have a SCOS database, yeah, with SCOS, the SCOS triple store also won't have a label, but it will have something like a preference label and an alt label, then uh, Graph will also use this one. And for Freebase, I would add the Freebase predicate for name, and then suddenly, instead of using these long identifiers, you would see suddenly the, the normal name of an object. I hope that is clear. Yeah, let me see here. Control Shift Eight. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Control Shift Eight. Sorry, that this is the one. So, yes. Yeah, so here you see that Control Shift Eight. Oh, it's in the script too, by the way. This is how it really would look like, but you can see that's just really ugly. But sometimes very useful to see it. And this will talk on it off again. So there's two ways: looking by label and seeing the full URL. Okay. Um, let me continue. So let me go back in the graph a little bit. And so here I have a part of the graph. And let's say I have this part here. And now I want to connect something that's completely unrelated. Yeah, so I can take a topic, romantic kissing, that sometimes works best. Yeah, there's one clinical trial. Um, that is initially unrelated to all of these. So what I can do is hit the letter Shift F and drag it to one of the other clinical trials. Yeah. And what it will try to do is find the shortest path to um, uh, to get from this clinical trial to this clinical trial about ibuprofen. Now, a will find 3,600 paths. So you have to select a subset to see some of them. So you can choose a few of them, yeah, like this. And now you will see uh, how things are linked to anxiety and then go to the particular clinical trial. But the graph completely changed, so that's kind of painful. So one thing you can do is do this again. I go to Z, and I actually 
pin this node to the background by hitting the letter I, and I select this clinical trial, and I also hit the letter I. So now I've pinned it to the background. So now if I find the shortest path again, I get my path. I select a few links. Now when I look at it, you see that they're still here. And now we can see how things link to anxiety to this clinical trial about pain and hypersensitivity all the way down back to this particular clinical trial. Yeah. So um, very important to remember I if you're doing something like this on huge graphs. Um, now sometimes you won't find a path. Yeah, and there's various things you can do. One is you can actually um, check to see if, and I'm going to show this in a second, but let me just do it for now. You can double click it and you get in the table view. I'll look at it in a second. But so I, as you remember, I tried to link things together through diseases, drug side effects, and target, but sometimes there's nothing there. So if there's nothing there, then Graph really can't find your, um, uh, can't find a link, obviously. So going back to the Graph view, another thing is sometimes you might have too many connections. Uh, too many predicates that you select with, and then the branching factor is that big that finding a path won't happen within 20 seconds, yeah, because it's just a, a combinatorial explosion. But sometimes you want to have less predicates, sometimes you actually want to have more predicates. And by the way, if you do this on big databases, it really helps if you have a solid state drive and a lot of memory. Yeah. Then also finding stuff in big graphs is a little bit faster. Um, and then some final things, uh, then let me delete the graph again, then you get something uh, like a, a, what is it, a heroin, yeah, and you get some clinical trials on the screen, let's see how they link together, then one thing I can do is say I find there's an interesting pattern, I can actually save a layout, so if I can save layout state, and I can say, uh, well, heroin. So now I have a layout, and if I lose this, I can load it again by going file, load layout state, and I can go to, hey, where is it? I thought I had heroin. Oh, here, heroin.layout, yeah? And so here I have my graph deck. So yeah, and it's a very simple text file that you can send to other people even in a, as, a, as email. Um, and I guess that was about all I wanted to show no, about the graph view. Um, so let me go back to the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, so I did a lot of stuff and I overwhelmed you, <coughs> but Everything I showed you was in the script. Yeah, so I show you how to get stuff back by pretext index and displaying all triples, how to get products on the screen, how to find something with pretext indexing, how then to explode nodes with the letter F, um, how important it is to remember Z to go back to a previous stage, how I can reorder graphs. Um, and I'm not going to going go through all of this. It's all in the script in the PowerPoint presentation that you get later. But everything I did is described here.